just wait for a couple people while they get on here. I just wanted to do a, a real quick video here. I know um, a lot of people were excited about Easter. I was too. I got some cool, um, some cool flirts about Easter. I believe, I believe that God wanted us to believe that. I believe often God wants us to believe in, um, in date sets that are given. I don't know if this happened to any of you, but date sets are really what, um, what really dr drove me to get deeper with God. Back in, uh, 2015, uh, in the springtime, um, I started to see all these videos about September 23rd. And I started to examine my life and say, man, is this really it? And if so, am I right with God? You know? And uh, I had to change a lot of things. And the fact that I felt there was no time left um, gave me the the courage to change things dramatically because I wasn't I wasn't trying to plan so far ahead into the future. I just had to get things right right now, you know, at the time. So it had an amazing effect on my life. I gave up a, a business I was running because I didn't feel like God wanted me to, to do that anymore. And I lost a lot of income. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I really examined my life in depth. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I think, I think a lot of people do hear from God when they give these date sets. I don't think that, I don't think that little boy had any reason to to lie I mean what would be his motivation right and a lot of the details that he gave from his vision are things that I've seen and things that others have seen and things that are biblical about the millennium reign and and um, about the different harvests so I totally believe him so then where does that I mean logically where does that leave that leaves um, that that God allows these date sets to come forth. That God is using these date sets even. And um, he's using them, I believe, for a couple of reasons. I think Judy talks about this a lot. He uses these date sets to um, separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the chaff. I think somebody just said that in the comments. Yeah, absolutely, that's what he does. And, and the other thing he does with them is he draws us in, he draws us deeper, and he, he challenges us to, to be willing to give up things in our life for his return to go deeper for his return, to examine ourselves and get things right for him. So he's, he's pulling his bride deeper. He's, he's cleaning and changing uh, his bride. And at the same time, he's separating out those who don't have love. I believe the way that, <clears throat> the way that, um, that people's hearts are going to be examined in terms of um, the rapture and and which harvest they would be a part of, I think a lot of it has to do with love. You know, if 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 someone's reaction to one of these date sets is to attack someone, 
they're going to be separated out. That's what I think. I think they're going to be separated out. I think your reaction has to be one of love. And if anyone thinks that they completely understand God's ways, then they're filled with pride and they're spiritually immature. Spiritual maturity comes with sub with submission, humility, with losing pride, with dying to yourself and realizing that God's ways are not your ways and that His ways are much higher and that you don't know everything. So I just wanted to come on to encourage people and say don't stop watching, don't um, don't get too down when if a date set comes and goes, just just look for what God's doing in it, you know. Look for how look for how he wants to change your life. Look for what he wants to do in you through the date set, through the high watch time. What does he want to do? How's he trying to change you? And and what should your reaction be if it comes and goes? How will you react in love? How will you die to yourself a little more? So, my next, well, the thing I'm watching next is, yeah, that's, I'm glad Rachel, Rachel says she's learning God's love for her more and more, absolutely, hi Lena. The, what I'm watching for next, um, a lot of people I saw got various words about war coming in April. That the, that the war would come in April. And we know, at least I hope most of you know that, um, that we're gone before the war. We're out of here a few days before America is destroyed by war, by nuclear war. So... If the war comes in April, that means we're gone um, in April. So there's a date given by Sandy, right, for the end of the Jubilee year coming like around April 18th or 19th. And, um, you know, so I'm looking hard at that uh, time frame. But the other one is, um, and Passover is not, not over yet either. We have a few days left at Passover. And of course, we know the calendars could be off, although I kind of think God's going to use our calendars just so that Jews have a sign so they know, you know, what time, what time he came for us. So it fits their paradigm. Uh, but the other thing that I was looking at really closely last year was uh, Pentecost. And I don't want to look that far out. I think it comes like at the end of May. And the downside is it's after the Jubilee year change. But there's some very interesting things to note about Pentecost. For one, that, that boy's vision pointed to Pentecost. It pointed to Exodus chapter 19 when the Israelites were... Um, were all gathered at Mount Sinai and they were told they had three days to uh, cleanse themselves the day of the next day and then the following day they would come back to the mountain and then God what they consider happened so God gave them the law at that time but and they met God but what they considered happened is that they actually married God on that day that's considered uh, the day that God married the the Jews so it's a wedding day and it happened it happened at Pentecost at Shavuot so there's um, there's correlations between Pentecost and a wedding and then also uh, you know Jewish tradition holds that Enoch was both born and raptured on Pentecost and we know the church was born on Pentecost so maybe it would also be raptured on Pentecost and then it's um, it's I think I think the wheat harvest. I think it's uh, when the wheat is harvested. I'm looking more for the first fruits before that event, but that event could still be very significant. So there's a lot of things to 
there's a lot of things to be excited about in the very near future. Um, but I'm, I'm still looking at Passover right now, and if not, I'm looking at before the Jubilee year changes in April, and if not, then then I'll look at Pentecost. So, anyway, I just wanted you guys to be encouraged. I don't know if people are feeling down out there because, well, obviously we're still here and um, and Easter's over, but I just I want to challenge you in your reaction to. Uh, date set passing by to a high watch time passing by make sure you're reacting in love and um, And be excited about the next one go ahead and jump into it And if you start to get if you start to get uh, you know rapture fatigue <laughs> Rapture watching fatigue which I sometimes get um, Don't feel guilty about just you know Focusing on something else for a few days. That's what I do. I I kind of tune out to the rapture watch for a few days and and just relax and you know read something and and focus my mind on something else and then I come back into it when I have some energy again because it's exhausting going through a high watch time don't think I don't know that you put all your energy and and all of your heart and all of your mind into the into a watch date and then it passes it's you know it's not easy and it it can wear you out so don't feel guilty about taking a little time to get your get your mind straight again before you jump into the next one. So, anyway guys, I, I love you. I need to get to work. Um, but uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? If not here, then in the air. Bye.